Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get to today's video, I just wanted to say I know what you're thinking. Where did I get this beautiful, vibrant colored sweater from? Well, this is my new Tiger Eye pullover sweater from the Mark Lindsay collection, specifically the Soul of Rock collection. And Rock Hounding Life is partnering with the Mark Lindsay collection to bring you the Soul of Rock collection. The Soul of Rock collection takes patterns of rocks from around the world beautiful photos and puts them on clothing. The clothing is made 100% of recyclable material. It's beautifully made, fits very comfortably. There's quite a lot of selection in the Soul of Rock collection. There's something there for everybody. If you're not into the clothes, then there's other things. There's cups, there's lampshades, there's bags, there's sneakers. Lots of things over there to check out. Our affiliate link to the website is in the description of this video. And by clicking on that link, you can get 20% off anything from the Solar Rock Collection on the website. Part of our partnership with the Mark Lindsay Collection is to look at Nova Scotia rocks, taking macro pictures, pictures of our local rocks here, and possibly incorporating them into the Solar Rock Collection. So keep an eye out for that in the future. So if you want to get yourself some clothing with some of the most recognizable rocks in the world, go ahead, head over to the Mark Lindsay Collection website and use that referral link in the description. Now let's get back to the video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jason with Rock Hounding Life here. First, I want to apologize for the noise. I got the lotto tumbler going in the background. Uh, we're in the shop here. I had another viewer reach out to me. They asked me if I could cut and polish a piece of petrified wood they had. They sent this to me. Really cool story behind it. Uh, the viewer told me that he collected this piece while he was on a boating trip with a buddy. And this was in the mid 80s, 1980s. And he was, in, he was boating on Lake Powell uh, in southern Utah which is basically on the border of Utah and Arizona. He ventured up on the shoreline uh, for a break and he came across this giant stump of petrified wood and he took it back with him. I thought that was really cool, really cool story. He's asked for it to be cut and polished. We're gonna cut this on our 24 inch Highland Park slab saw today. It's a full round piece. See, it's full round. And it does have some jasper and agony bits in it. You can see here, you know, there's all kinds of it in here. So it's going to be interesting to see what this looks like cut and polished. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and slab this up in the saw right now. And we'll take a look and see what it looks like inside. Come along. Okay, we're all viced up here. It's very awkward. It was very awkward fitting it into the vise. It's it's kind of angled. It's an angled piece. So I have to cut kind of a wide part here at this end, and it's going to be thin here. So uh, that's, that's what's going to get it to straight cut. But it's still going to leave quite a bit of, uh, of a specimen behind. So, uh, and also there's a crack underneath here. You didn't see it, but there, there is a crack underneath here. So I'm, I'm trying to cut behind that fracture so that it doesn't fracture any more part of the wood. Um, so it's a little tricky. As you can see there's, there's other kind of, not really fractures, but they're kind of indentations in the bark. So that's the biggest fear in cutting these bigger stumps is, you know, you want to keep your end piece intact because it's also going to be a nice show piece and yeah, you don't want it to break off and crack. That's the danger of this. So if you see any fractures in it on the edges, you got to try to cut in behind those. So we're going to go ahead and try this. We'll show it here at the end. Okay, so the saw is done. Let's take a look at the cut. Oh wow. So that came off quite nice. And it does have some silica in there. So you can see some some rings. I 
think that's the pith right there. But those two, like, there's two eye, like, Jasper eyes in there. It's kind of cool. Let's look at the main piece. It looks very nice. So we're going to get this out, get the oil cleaned up off of it, and we're going to then look at how we're going to polish it. So we've cleaned the oil off of our piece of petrified wood here and it's all dry and it's super smooth like super smooth and I think we could start this off on an 800 grit because the saw cut was so good I don't see any saw marks in it so we're gonna use our DIY setup with our drill and our polishing pads and we're going to go through 800, then we're going to go to 15, 3,000, and then we're going to go to an 8,000 and a 10,000 grit. And that should get us a pretty good mirror shine. So I'm excited to see how this turns out. Uh, lots of quartz in it. Like there's lots of fractures that are filled with quartz. But these two, you know, we got these two jasper circles in it, which are really cool. This looks like the northern Arizona petrified wood. I have an example of it that I'll show later in a side-by-side -side comparison with this. They look pretty similar. So where this is southern Utah, kind of on the border of Arizona, I think it's it's probably similar uh, to that, similar in age, similar in type. So uh, let's look at that later. But first, let's get started on this polish with the 800 grit. All right, so here's the final product. This piece is polished up to 10,000 grit using the DIY polishing pads and the drill. Uh, this piece turned out really nice. It's got some really cool features. It, it almost looks like when you zoom in there, it almost looks like the Arizona petrified wood colors just in that one little spot right there. And down here, there's some green that pops in and some more cool red, red hues. I have a piece of northern Arizona petrified wood, and this looks an awful lot like that. Just talking about that DIY setup, if you guys want to try that, you know, I have an Amazon storefront where I list all of those materials you need to get started on that DIY setup, so you can go and check out the storefront. The link is in the description in the link tree link. And you can get to the storefront and see what you need to set that up. It's I think you can get everything for pretty close to a hundred bucks. It's it's pretty cheap setup. Again, this piece was found in 
Southern Utah from the viewer that sent it to me. He found it back in the 80s. And, you know, right along the border of Arizona and Utah, so in that Lake Powell region. And this piece here is from northern Arizona, northeastern Arizona, I believe. And you can see there's, it's, it's kind of similar. A lot of similar colors and tones. The bark looks very similar. So, you know, they're, they're technically not that far away from each other these localities where these two pieces were found. Lots of that white quartz in this one. There's lots of white quartz in that one. The the red tones here. This one's, you know, got more concentric banding in it. This one's broken up a little bit more. There's a little more limb cast action in that one, especially on that red jasper bit there. But uh, yeah, pretty similar. I think, you know, they're coming from close to the same region. So anyway, I'm gonna package this one up, send it back to the the owner. Uh, thank you for sending that to me and giving me a chance to work with it. Really cool stuff. If you like the content we're putting out, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, put videos out every Saturday, once a week. Rock hounding. Got a lot of variety in the channel that we try to keep up with, so join us along for the ride. With that being said, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in this week, and we'll catch you in the next one.